stash near an ice bag in Seattle. The Seattle was the first Jewish school for girls, and I saw the need for Jewish girls. Girls. Um, Sarah Schneer was born in 1830, and she passed away in 1935, and she was 53. Um, the Seattle Mini was a white button down collar, uh, and after she died, um, the first person to play the Seattle in America was one of her students, that being Rick McCaffrey. She hired some of Sarah Schneer's other students to work for her. She had so many students that you couldn't count them. Her students called her Frau Schneer because she lived in Krakow, Poland, and Frau means is Mrs. in Polish. Um, goodbye. I hope that you enjoyed. My name is Jane Goodall, and I am a scientist that studies animals like chimpanzees. And today I'm going to take you on a tour of the places I have been around the world. I was born in London, England, and I loved animals. Worms were my favorite. I even once put them under my pillow, but then my mom said I had to take them back outside. I had a lot of chickens and loved riding horses. For my first birthday, my dad got me a stuffed monkey named Jubilee. Everybody said my dad shouldn't give it to me because they thought it was creepy and would give me nightmares. But he still gave it to me, and I still have it today. <laughs> when I grew up in 1960, I went to Gombe, Africa to study chimpanzees. I got really close to them, which was hard because they were a little scary. I stood in the woods for a very long time to observe them. I was the first to discover that they made and used doors. They took a leaf and took all of it off except this stem stuck in a termite knot, and then they pulled it out, there was termites on it, and then they ate them. Lots of people found out about me when National Geographic put me on the cover of their magazine in 1963, Washington, D.C. And my story was called My Life Among the Wild Chimpanzees. Back in Tanzania, I kept studying chimpanzees. And in 1975, I saw that they were sometimes cannibals, which means they ate each other. Two males attacked a female and their baby and took the baby and ate it. I thought this was just a random attack because they were from two different communities. Then I saw that they would also do this in their own communities. In 1977, 77, in Washington, D.C., I founded the Jane Goodall Institute. What we did there was we researched chimpanzees and worked to help chimpanzees in their habitat. In 1991, I founded the Leaves and Shoots with Teens in Africa, so kids can do something to make the world a better place. In 2004, in New York, I, I was named the UN Messenger of Peace. Everyone can make the world a better place if they try. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Isaac Newton. Um, I live to be 86 years old when the lifespan in the 1600s was only 43 years old. Um, I'm going to tell you about my childhood, how I was the first person to understand the rainbow and gravity. Um, my dad died three months before I was born, and then my mother married Barnabas Smith when I was four years old but he would not allow me in his house, so I had to stay with my grandparents for eight years. Um, with my grandparents, I didn't have really much to do. There wasn't anything fun. Um, now I'm going to talk about how I was the first person to understand the rainbow. Um, it works like light goes into this um, clear object, and then a rainbow comes out the other side. Now I'm going to talk about gravity. 
If you throw something up into the air, it will fall back down because um, that's how gravity works. One day, Isaac Newton was sleeping under his apple tree, and then an apple fell on his head. That, and then he woke, he, um, and he woke up, and then he realized what happened, and he called it gravity. That's all I have to say. I am Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is famous for the projects he invented. Some of his inventions are the Macintosh computer, the iPhone, the iPod, and the iPad. My favorite thing Steve Jobs invented is the iPod. Steve's dad, Paul, got him thinking about electronics and cars. He taught him how to build. Steve had to work hard for his education. He had to beg to listen to classes for free because he wanted to learn, but he couldn't afford a college. When Steve was first serving Apple, he did not do a good job spending time with his family. He always chose his job. When he got older, he realized this was wrong and changed his choice. Steve named his company Apple because he only ate fruit. His favorite fruit of all was an apple. Another interesting fact about food is when Steve was deciding on the colors of the iMac computer, he picked the colors of his favorite jelly beans. He visited a jelly bean factory and loved the way the colors of the blueberry, grape, on strawberry, and tangerine jelly beans looked. Steve Jobs died in 2011. He was a very smart man, and he changed the world. Thank you for listening. I was born in Italy on April 15, 1452. My parents were Sir Piero, a businessman, and my mother was Katrina. And she was poor, but a peasant girl. My parents loved me at a young age, so I lived with my uncle Francisco, who was a farmer. We grew close together. When I was young, I went to Vertigo Studios and learned how to paint. In 1478, I made my famous painting, Portrait, of Gunvara de Vinci. In 1495, I designed this to look like a human does. Wood equals bone and leather equals muscles. I also made a bicycle that didn't fully work but was a start to where we all ride today. I feel many times so I went back to my paintings and made the Mona Lisa. I also painted The Last Supper which is well known across the art world. I then passed away on May 2nd in 1519. And a fun fact, one of the Ninja Turtles are named after me. Okay, today I'm doing Martin Luther King Jr. or should I say my whole book report is on Martin Luther King Jr. And first I'm gonna ask all of you guys a question. What, what do you think if the laws or let's just say, what do you think if I, Martin Luther King Jr., did not um, change the laws? What would you think about the Martin? What, what, what would you think about um, the laws now? I'm gonna ask this question after, not now. <laughs> I should have said that before. Okay, so Martin Luther King was um, well, well when he was born, he was a young boy. Um, and he normally, well, no, not normally, but well, he normally had to um, had to um, deal with the um, horrible laws, and that, and he wasn't able to see any white people or use the same water fountain as um, white people or anything. And um, let's just say, if um, a white person wanted to um, eat lunch then the black person had to stay in the corner and then er and the white people can sit wherever they want. So it really wasn't fair of why, of why um, that those laws were there. So then years later, 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 um, uh, he grew up to be a good man and then um, he made a famous speech still known today in 2022 history. Um, um, I have
have a dream. That's what the speech is called. And I have a dream is really famous. And um, he gathered tons and tons of people. And he wanted to change the laws. He wanted everyone to have um, to be happy and have equal rights. So that's why he did the I have a dream because normally your dreams don't come true. Um, like if you dream, I have I want a million dollars. It's not really gonna happen that easily. Um, but that's really what I wanted to say. So thanks for listening and have an awesome day. <laughs> Cassandra. I always loved writing when I was um, a young girl and then when I was all grown up. I wrote lots of books called Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, First Impressions, and many more. Um, I was just at a ball um, in many, in a grand estate called Many Down Park, and I was just hoping you, you guys would like to be characters in my next book. You guys, would you guys like to? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. Because whenever I go to balls, I um, I meet lots of people, and I like using them in my books. I think it's getting late. I must go. Bye. Bye. Hi. I'm Natalie Stakert. I um, I was reading about Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart was born with lost her memory. And she was born in Kansas. And Amelia's nickname is me. Um, her father, Edwin, was a lawyer for the railroad. And she only had one sister named Grace. And her mother didn't do that much things with her. Her name was Amy. And Amelia went to high school. And she when she graduated from high school, she wanted to be a nurse, then a doctor, then a pilot. Um, and back then, one, it was one dollar. And back then, one dollar cost um, like a thousand or a hundred. Um, and Her job to get the money for um being like a bully. Um and a truck driver and she's a tomboy, so that's why I'm wearing like pants and um and her struggles one of her struggles um was to was like getting people on the most like to um fly on the plane because they would um pick up words or um they would walk so they didn't go that far from home and um her other struggles were um one time she wanted to break one more um, fine record. Um, and when she was flying, the ocean was um, really um, cold and it was rainy. It was windy, cloudy, and a piece of her um, clean broke, so um, she had to land on a farm safely. But she wanted to land in Paris. But she couldn't, and uh, she um and people had search parties for her because they didn't know where she was, and um they pronounced her dead in 1939. But I want to be her, uh, no, because I'm afraid of 
Heights, but I think she's really interesting and cool. Hi, okay, I'm Eliana Kirsten. My book report is on Simone Files. Simone Files is the greatest gymnast ever. Simone's birthday is March 14, 1997. Simone is 24 years old. Simone has four siblings. Simone was adopted by her grandparents. Simone Bell started gymnastics at age six. Thank you for listening. Now I'm doing a presentation on Benjamin Franklin. Do you know who's on the $100 bill? It's Benjamin Franklin. He did so much for America and the world. Ben came from a really big family. They didn't have a lot of money. When he was a kid, he worked on his older brother's printing shop. He ran away from home at age 17 because his brother was beating him up. But he didn't let any of that stop him from becoming a great person. Ben invented a lot of things. He was super creative and a really great scientist. Ben discovered the nature of lightning and used it to invent lightning rods, which every building has today. Anytime he noticed something missing that he could use, he just invented it. When he got tired of switching glasses, he invented bifocals, to help see both far and near. When he couldn't reach the top bookshelf, he invented an artificial arm. He also invented a stove, glass harmonica, street lamps, and much more. A lot of his inventions are still used today. Ben was also a writer. He ran the Pennsylvania Gazette, and it became the leading newspaper. He also wrote the most popular almanac in America, called Poor Richard's Almanac. He included a lot of his own sayings in his almanac, and many of them became famous, like Haste Make Waste, and a penny saved is a penny earned. And he became the largest bookseller in the colonies before Amazon. Ben also was a leader in America when it was still ruled by England. Ben helped America become free and make peace with France and England. He helped write the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. He was also governor of Pennsylvania and one of America's founding fathers. He also started the first general hospital, public library, fire department, and designed the U.S. postal system. I don't know what America would be like without him. Finally, Benjamin Franklin was a great inventor, scientist, writer, and leader. He did so much that some people thought he had magical powers. I hope you learned something new about Benjamin Franklin. Hello, my name is Bradley, and I want to tell you about George Washington. He was not at, he was not good at spelling. George Washington had a wife named Martha Custis and had two kids. Jackie and Patsy were his kids. He was the first president, April 30, 1789. He signed many laws to help the state. He chose people to help him, like Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton. He led an army to victory. Okay, don't, don't go anywhere. We're going to do three questions.
is actually the star's light shining down on Earth. So it looks like the star is over there, and it's actually over here, and the sun's gravity is bending it towards the Earth. Now, why can it only happen during a lunar eclipse? The only reason it can happen during a lunar eclipse is because, um, is because you, it's dark out. But what happens at night? The sun is uh, where the, um, the sun is not out, so it can, so and it's not dark out. And it's it's dark out because the sun is not in the area. But the sun is in the area during a lunar eclipse, it's, but it's also dark. Anybody know what it means? It means energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. I'll tell you what that means. Um, actually, I can't think of any number that we use. It means like, like I forget what it means. Like, okay, well, that's what it means. Um, I forget what it means. So, it helps make the atomic bomb in the Manhattan Project, which helps everybody which helped America win World War II. Here's my telescope I was using to look at my bending light theory. It's a very good telescope. And yeah, bye bye. <laughs> oh, don't go too far. We're gonna ask questions. Hello, hello everybody, I'm Kelly Ride. Some of you may not know me, but I was the first American woman and I created the 50-foot robotic arm, and I even controlled it in space. I got a Bachelor of Science in Physics and a Bachelor of Art in English. I continued at Stanford University doing my Master of Science. I even have my own company. It's called Salarize Science. It was it has its STEM activities, books, and other cool stuff. Some of my books are called To Space and Back. The third planet, exploring our solar system, the mission planet Earth, the mystery of Mars, Voyager, mission save the planet, Voyager, Voyager space and space shuttle, 1981 to 2011, explored some 30 years of exploration. Right here is this book. I'm going to be reading to you.
but first it was failing to go to college. Since he kept working hard and practicing, he ended up being one of the greatest athletes of the 20th century. He set three track and field world records in one day, completing the 100 yard dash, 220 yard dash, and the long jump. He jumped 26 feet and eight inches. And he won four gold medals at the 1936 Olympics in Germany. He showed the Nazis what a black athlete could do. Jesse became so famous, he was elected to the International Track and Field Hall of Fame. Since Jesse was so well known, the president asked him to go on a Google tour around the world after World War II. He traveled to different countries to create peace. Since he lived at a time when black people didn't have the same rights, so he fought for black rights. He wrote two books to help the civil rights movement. Later in his life, Jesse got to the Presidential Medal of Freedom, a real big honor. Jesse didn't have an easy life, but he worked really hard and won lots of awards. He used his fame to inspire peace and civil rights. People still remember him as one of the world's greatest athletes. cannot be undone, but one can prevent it from happening. My name is Anne Frank, and my life is very hard. I lived in World War II, where things and people weren't safe. I, um, I, in my town, things were very unsafe, so I had to travel to Holland, Amsterdam, and go hiding in, in Eric's. And after a little bit, um, the Nazis found me, and we had to travel to a concentration camp. A little bit after that, we had to tra travel to Bergen Melsen concentration camp, where I got a disease called typhus, and I sadly didn't make it. Here are some pictures of my life. These are my school pictures. This is my dad. This is where I hid. And this is um, someone who drew me. This is my diary. This is me when I was young. And this is my grave. And this is another quote. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are good. I can't see it. I can't see it. I no one can. I no one can. Here. You, are, you can just walk around real yeah. quickly if you want. Yep. Oh, we'll do questions. These are good questions. My parents got to meet um, Anne's stepsister um, when she um, was presenting in Lakeview. Wow. Oh. What? Is that it? Um, yeah. And she, all, um, and Anne called her diary Katie. And during the Holocaust, Anne felt lonely and frustrated from having no privacy. Margot got jealous of Anne. By the way, Margot is um, Anne's sister, and she got jealous because Anne had more privileges because she was older. Yeah. Okay, good job. My goal is to make this into a country. I mean, my goal. I need to be for a country in 1948. It took me a long time to do this because I lived a short life. I was 44 years. I like this. And this is like this is a speech that Theodore Herzl said. It, it's like as if something that Theodore Herzl said. If you will, it is my dream. And if you do not will, I dream it is and I dream it was dead. No. She had to magic and open the door with magic.
You on a time, sweetie? Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Can you, you froze on our end. I don't know why. Can you just do the ending? I think we just missed the ending part. Yeah. 
Shabbos, I have over 200 guests, and I only work in a very small kitchen. On Shabbos, I have a lot of guests, and some of them are interested in Torah, and we have Torah speeches. So they start saying, this is so boring, can't we change the topic? March 13, 1958, 21 of other, 57, 18.